Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory and in this video I'm going to talk about Azure AD joint devices. Now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about Azure AD registered devices and the agenda for this video will be knowing what is Azure AD joint devices, what exactly happens when you join a device to Azure Active Directory, what are the logs that you can refer to on event viewer and how the certificate is being purged on a particular machine the process is different as compared to that of azure active directory registered devices and i will be showcasing you that as well the last thing that we will talk about will be a single sign-on with the fiddler trace now if you talk about azure ad joint devices likewise we were registering the device in the same process we'll choose some different options and we'll join the device to Azure Active Directory. I will be showcasing you this with my client machine and then it will make a lot of sense. But there is something which is common between Azure Active Directory registered and Azure Active Directory joined device that a device object will be created in Azure Active Directory. But again, one very simple fundamental, since these two are different type of device objects so some of the attributes will be different as well as when you will query a ds reg command on azure ad registered devices as well as on azure ad joint devices you will get different results now if we talk about azure ad joint devices this concept can be applied to your corporate machines as well in the scenarios wherein you are a cloud only organization that means you don't have any on-prem environment and what you are doing is you are simply joining the windows and machine directly to azure active directory and you are providing those machines to your users since you don't have any on-prem environment you cannot domain join that machine so you are simply azure ad joining that machine so that you can provide single sign-on as one of the features to all the applications that are protected by your azure active directory but this option is not limited to internal network and corporate devices. This is something which applies to bring your own device. That means personal devices as well. You can connect your personal laptop or you can join your personal machine to Azure Active Directory of your enterprise if they allow you to do so. Now, the concept is same that you will get a single sign-on. The only difference between Azure AD joint devices and Azure AD registered devices is that in Azure AD joint devices, you will sign in with your corp identity in Windows as well. That is something which is again, I'm going to showcase you in the lab demo. Now, how exactly single sign-on is happening in Azure AD joint devices, the concept is same because there is a device object that exists in Azure Active Directory and there is a PRT which is available on the device object. Now, as I said before that in Azure AD joint devices, you will be using work or school accounts, but this concept is only applicable to Windows 10 devices. So what I've done is for my lab, I have taken a Windows 10 machine. The host name of that machine is AAD join. We'll run dsrh command before joining the machine and after joining the machine so that you can check the differences. And the last thing that we'll talk about will be single sign-on on Azure AD joined devices. So now I'm going to switch to my machine where I will be joining that to Azure Active Directory. So this is my machine. And if I do host name, the host name of this machine is AAD join. In the previous video, I have opened the certificates for user context, but in this, I have opened it for my computer. And once we'll join this machine to Azure Active Directory, you will see two certificates getting populated here. So what I'll do now is, since this machine is right now not joined to Azure Active Directory, I'll run this command to check what all information we are getting. And as you can see, it is showing me Azure AD join is set to no as well as there is no Azure AD PRT. These are the two basic differences that you have to keep in mind before we can go ahead and join this machine to Azure Active Directory. There is one more thing which is very important and which I would like to show you guys and that is the event viewer. That means which folder you should refer to to check the logs that are getting generated while your machine is getting Azure AD joined.
So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Microsoft and then I'm going to click on Windows. And now I'm going to select the folder, which is user device registration. And in that folder, all the logs will get generated once this machine will be joined to Azure Active Directory. So this is the admin folder, which I have just cleared for the reference so that uh, all the tasks that we will do should get recorded here and you should have a better understanding of what kind of logs are generated what exactly what kind of information has actually been pushed on this particular machine from Azure Active Directory so what I'll do now is I'll click on start and I'll click on settings and then I'll click on accounts and I will click on access work or school and again, I will click on connect. Now, if you remember that when we were doing Azure AD registered devices, we were simply typing the UPN here and we were clicking on next. That was registering uh, this particular device to Azure Active Directory, but we have to join now. So what we'll do is we'll select this option of join this device to Azure Active Directory. And this is the only difference when it comes to getting the device registered and joined to Azure Active Directory. So what I'll do is I'll type in my UPN and then I will type my password and I will click on next. Now there is a difference when it comes to user experience. This is something which you will not get when you will try to register your device. This is something which you will only get when you are joining the device. And what does this mean that this user with which I'm joining the machine to Azure Active Directory will become the admin of this particular machine, which is as expected. So I'll click on join. Now, during this process, a device object is created, respective certificates are pushed. And that is something which I'm going to showcase you now. So I'll click on done and I'll go back to my certificates tab and I'll just refresh this. And as you can see, I'm getting two certificates listed over here. Now, the first certificate that you see here is being issued to this. Now, this is again the device ID claim of this particular object, which is created in Azure Active Directory. I'll switch to that browser where I have where I have opened Azure Active Directory and I will show you this particular attribute. So this is my browser where I've signed into Azure Active Directory and now I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory and then we'll click on devices and then we'll check for the device which we have just joined. And as you can see that the device ID starts from 128 and ends up with 5890 so what i'll do is i'll switch back to my vm and as you can see it's 125890 now this is the set of information which is also available in event viewer and i'll show you how so this is the list of all the logs that gets generated when you will try to join a machine to azure active directory and as you can see that now I'm getting the list of all the endpoints that are used while you try to join your machine to Azure Active Directory. Now, these are all endpoints. If you want, you can just have a look on them. Most of them will be related to enterprise registration endpoint, which is more over device registration. And some of the certificates are being queried and pushed from this endpoint. So every endpoint that's listed over here has its own purpose, but all these endpoints are accessed while your machine is getting joined or registered to Azure Active Directory. In the event viewer itself, you'll find the information about the certificate which has been pushed to this particular machine. So if I'll copy the certificate and if I'll save it in .cer format, I'll get the same reference which I can find it here. So issued two parameter in the particular certificate that's available on a device which is either registered or joined should always match with the device id claim of that particular object created in azure active directory the very first and very basic fundamental so right now this machine is now joined to azure active directory and i will clear this and i will run the same command again 
Now I'll show you the differences. The first option here says that this machine is now Azure AD joined and Azure AD PRT is not getting mentioned here. Now, the reason behind this is because though this machine is joined to Azure Active Directory, but the user with which I'm logged in right now is still my local account. So what I'll do is I'll quickly restart this machine and then we'll try to sign in with my corp ID and what I will get Azure ADPRT will be set to yes. Now the very basic fundamental here is that is I am signing with my corp identity on this particular Windows 10 machine. Now as of now just imagine that this scenario this result that you can see right now it's not identical please make sure that you get you don't get confused it's not identical it's somewhat similar to what you were getting in azure ad registered devices because in those devices you are not signing in to windows 10 machine with your id you are signing in uh, with your id in browsers that means you are getting sso in the browser but when you join a machine to Azure Active Directory, you will use your corporate identity to sign in to Windows 10 machines as well. And that's the only reason why this Azure AD PRT will be set to yes the moment I will sign in with my corp identity. This is one of the basic and the most important difference between Azure AD registered device and Azure AD joint device. So I'll pause this video, get this machine restarted and resume it again. So as you can see, my machine is restarted now and now I'm getting this option of other user and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in with my corp identity, which is enter at the concepts.work.com with the same password. And now I am signing in in this Windows 10 machine with my enterprise email ID and password or enterprise username or password. And now if I go ahead and do or run the dsreg command, you'll see the difference what I was getting before and what I will get now. So I'm going to run dsreg cmd space forward slash status. And as you can see, I'm getting Azure AD PRT set to yes as well as Azure AD joined set to yes. So as of now, this machine is joined to Azure Active Directory and I have Azure AD PRT for user as well. Now, the last thing that we are left with is showing you guys with a fiddler trace how exactly the SSO will be processed. So there will be no difference in terms of SSO getting processed for a particular user because I will showcase you the same cookie name with the same PRT information that's mentioned before. And as you can see that the moment browser went to portal.azure.com, I have not been asked to type in any username and password and directly I've landed to the home page and if I go back to my fiddler and if I'll try to search the request which has been sent to login.microsoftonline.com as you can see this is the same information which I was getting in our Azure AD registered devices as well and what exactly this information is the PRT that's been saved on this particular machine for this particular user. So if I copy this and if I go to jwt.io and if I paste this token here, as you can see, this is the refresh token that's been embedded with the request that's been sent to login.microsoftonline.com. And on behalf of this PRT, which has been sent to login.microsoftonline.com, you see this. Uh, token uh, ID token is being sent in response and which can be tracked from here as you can see it is showing me ID token so if I copy this now and I go back to my browser and I paste this over here as you can see it's been issued to enter at the rate conceptswork.com so this was all about knowing how Azure AD join devices work let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video.
So we have discussed about how exactly Azure AD join devices work, what exactly happens when you join a device to Azure Active Directory. We have also talked about single sign-on and event logs that you should check, user device registration folder, certificate is saved in the computer context or for the computer folder instead of user context, which was happening in Azure AD registered devices. In the next video, I'll be talking about hybrid Azure AD joint devices. If you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any feedback, question or suggestion, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.